We should be going into the psychology of the things that happen in our society so we can have a better understanding of how to manage ourselves. I want to talk about the psychology of why someone will do what Sharon Oja did by marrying this guy. Talking about the psychology of getting into a relationship speedily, dating and speedily marrying without actually knowing the person. First off, let me say one thing. Our ideas of marriage, we need to understand that our ideas of marriage are all different. We project our own ideas onto the next person. We usually think that our standards are the same that other people are using for their decisions. But that's not the case. From what I found, speaking to so many people from my work and from life experience as well, we all have different ideas and standards for something like marriage. Now, in the past, it used to be that people would marry people just by... That's our neighbor, we know them, That's they live in the next farm, they own the next farm, they own the next vineyard, they own the other business. This family knows this family, so we know them very well, so this is a good match. And from the time that these people, even before they're adults, they're already matched. And they didn't know themselves, so this was an arranged marriage most of the time. And those marriages also worked, because... They were based on other things. They're just based on, is this a person of good character and from a good family? And that's all that was necessary. And then things started to evolve and we became people who had a choice in who we marry. So now we talk about companionship. Some of us talk about love. Some of us talk about compatibility. It's not the same thing for everyone. So let's just talk with what we have in the, the prevailing mindset, or so it seems, or at least my mindset. For me, I believe in love and compatibility as and as essential parts for a relationship and for a marriage. And so that's where I'm going to be coming from, from what I'm giving here. So if that's what you believe in, let's go. I've made a long note for you, and you're going to be able to download the article that I've written after this video. I'm going to make it accessible to you, and it will be in the description box. Entering into a marriage is a significant and lifelong commitment that requires a deep understanding and knowledge of the partners. Marrying someone without knowing them well enough can lead to so many potential issues and challenges. And I'm about to give you some of the reasons why it's not advisable to marry someone you haven't known for long enough. There is an age where one is ordinarily sufficiently old enough and experienced enough to know that this relationship will make sense to lead to marriage. But sometimes you can get to that age, but you don't have the experience. You haven't had the life experience to be able to make that judgment. And this can be a problem. And so, if considering what Sharon did here, I could have done that at the age of 33 and even older. I say this because my mindset, I'm the kind who I'm crazy about romance. And it took me a while to recognize that not everyone is thinking that way. And also, as much as the romance will be there, there are other things to also have in mind. Without which, however much the romance is, the relationship is headed to hell, <laughs> literally to hell. And so let's not even talk about age when we're talking about this, because you can get to a certain age and people think that you know certain things, but because of the kind of life that you've lived, maybe you, you live a sheltered, inhibited kind of life, maybe you weren't exposed to so many experiences or too many relationships with even just friendships, so that you don't really know what human beings do when they're being human. And so your understanding of what happens in an intimate relationship, how it unfolds and how the layers are peeled back to reveal sometimes monsters is limited. So... Let's not talk about age here. Okay, so the reasons why we shouldn't marry people that we haven't known for long enough. First, we're going to have to dissect the types of people that would go ahead to create a relationship and a marriage so speedily. There are two main types of people. There are the ones who are very innocent and naive, people like who I used to be. And then there are the ones who are wolves. So the ones who are very innocent and naive are being very optimistic. And they, they believe that they're going to give their best in this relationship and it's going to work because this is all that matters. And they're expecting the same from the other party. But the, the, then there are the, uh, there's the other group 
who are the sheep, the wolves in sheep's clothing, and they know I'm just going to get into this thing because I need to eat this person up, literally. Use them for my benefits and then toss them out when I'm done with them. So these are the two people who will be ready to jump into a relationship speedily and even let it lead to marriage. I want you to see the qualities of what these people can have in their characteristics. And it may be one or a combination of these qualities, of these characteristics. It may be one or a combination of these characteristics. One, a person who has not experienced enough relationships. I already mentioned that. Two, a person who has hemophilia. What we call hemophilia is a trait which makes people fall in love quickly. If you have hemophilia, then you're someone who speedily falls in love. And this can be due to past trauma, maybe from relationships, from disappointments, even with family members, for instance, parents see a heartbreak, or a need even to distract yourself from other painful realities of life. And so falling in love is a distraction for you and you want it to take over everything else and you want to drown yourself in it. You just need something that will make you feel validation from the attention of that other person. Three, low self-esteem. This is an interesting one. It's important for us to grasp why low self-esteem is a very big consideration in this. And you may not know that this is where you're operating from. You need to grasp this and boldly, I say boldly write it on your heart. Because in the first place, for you to be ready to give yourself to someone that you don't know very well, you're not even sure, you're not, you haven't carefully, completely verified that this person is worthy of you, for you to be ready to give yourself to that person, it speaks to the value that you have of yourself. Hear me out. You think that you value yourself. Indeed, you value yourself. Here's the thing. If you had a very valuable item, belonging, you wouldn't leave it make it accessible to just anyone. You would want to know the person who is going to have access to it because you want it to be kept safe for you so that you can have it whole again when you want to use it. So if you can do this for an item, something that is not you, something that is outside of an object, an inanimate object, how about yourself? Picture a newborn baby. You're a newborn baby. You wouldn't hand your newborn baby over to just anyone to take care of for you because you're in a hurry to go even for a job interview. If you're not able to ascertain that this is someone you can trust, you're not going to give your newborn baby to that person. If you cannot give your newborn baby to someone who you haven't verified, how is it that you're able to give yourself to someone who you haven't completely verified is capable of taking care of you? So that tells you right there that there's something off with your self-worth and self-esteem the estimated value that you have given to yourself and there is no argument there i've just explained it very clearly tell me in the comments if you don't think so maybe i can tell me in the comments if you think otherwise like the person you choose to be in a relationship with or to remain in a relationship with is a strong indicator of your own self-esteem and self-worth and the reason why this is sometimes an unconscious thing that we may not even be aware of is simply because it creeps up on us. Uh, there's, that's because there are so many facets to life and we are not going to be at 100% on every level of pass. There will be something somewhere hidden, well, well maybe not for you, but I think for me and for many people who, before we had the conversation, really thought that they were fully confident, only to, upon reflection, recognize and admit that, and I found this for myself as well, oh no, oh this little area tucked away somewhere in my personality is a thing for which I know that if you shone the light on it, I am not at a hundred percent. So you don't know how that unconsciously or subconsciously affects you, your choices and your behavior. And this is why we're human beings. We're just complex. That's how we roll. That's how we are. 
And so don't think that this is beyond you. This could happen to even the most confident of people. But the level and the extent to which we will allow this to carry on is what determines really, really, if we really, really are lacking in self-esteem. Number four of the kind of qualities that a person who would rush into a relationship and a marriage would possess, the possibility that this you're a dangerous person or that the person you're dealing with is a dangerous person, a self-centered person who deliberately and urgently needs the relationship very fast, wanting to develop very fast and deep before the other party realizes that they are a bad person. Consequently, it's already too deep for them to extricate themselves because maybe they have invested too much already financially or emotionally or sexually or family-wise or otherwise. Now, why is it so bad? Why is it so, so bad to rush into a relationship, particularly marriage, even if it's not marriage? But let's talk about marriage in this case. Remember the two types of people that are involved here. Somebody who is either very innocent or two people who are very innocent and naive or two people who are very dangerous and wanting to take advantage of, of the other or one person is innocent and naive and the other person is dangerous. It could be any of the combinations. For the dangerous one, for the evil and dangerous one, they're going to have the upper hand anyway. But for the innocent and naive one, it gets very, very dangerous. We don't even know how bad the other person can be. We don't know how bad they can get, how they can turn around and turn our life upside down. It may even be something so negative that we will have to deal with it for the rest of our life and by which time we've put our whole life and our wellness at risk for the rest of our life eternally. Next thing I'm going to do, I am going to tell you 12 big reasons why it is so nightmaringly scary to get into such a relationship or marriage. I want to do that in part two of this so that this video doesn't become too long. Let's go.